Do omega-3 fats from fish oil or otherwise improve your brain health and performance? I analyzed at least seven studies to find out the answer for you. So we'll cover if it does, some of the proposed mechanisms, some potential differences in the results between men and women, and some nuances on what aspects of brain performance it seems to help and other aspects that it does not seem to help. You might already know this, but omega-3 fats are polyunsaturated fats with a distinct uh, kinked chemical structure. It's believed, according to this study, that omega-3 fats lead to changes in the cell membrane of your cells, specifically your brain cells. It also encourages neuroplasticity and improves synaptic transmission. If that all sounded like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, have no fear, this is what it looks like. Omega-3 fats can be incorporated into the cell membrane of your brain cells. If that's the cells that communicate amongst themselves for you to have thoughts, your neurons, or other cells like glial cells. So what does that do? Well, the greater incorporation of omega-3 fats in the cell membrane changes the fluidity, the flexibility of the cell membrane, which in turn means the proteins like receptors and channels that interact with surrounding molecules are better able to function. This improved function of these receptors allows the brain cells to communicate more efficiently and effectively with other nearby cells. In addition, it changes the makeup of the cell membrane. So it has a different distribution of lipid rafts. Lipid rafts are these sections of the cell membrane that contain high concentrations of cholesterol, other fats, proteins, and sugar molecules. These lipid rafts can act as anchoring points for signaling proteins. So these are proteins that translate information across the cell. These proteins, when in closer proximity with one another, are more likely to interact. Again, increasing the efficiency of the cell's internal communication. Omega-3s have variable effects on these lipid rafts, from increasing their concentration in certain areas of the cell to eliminating their presence. But either way, the net effect is typically positive for the cell. So some omega-3s are wanted in the cell membrane. Those fancy words that I used earlier, neuroplasticity and synaptic transmission, are the fancy terms for saying that the brain is more malleable, more adaptable. And mechanistically speaking, omega-3s have a role in that process. We'll see if it actually pans out in the clinical evidence in a minute. I'd also like to point out that certain types of omega-3 fats are also precursors for the molecule neuroprotectin D, which is believed to have a number of functions in protecting brain cells. Essentially, omega-3 fats can be released from the cell membrane as free omega-3, which are then turned into neuroprotectin D. This neuroprotectin D molecule diffuses across the cell membrane and either interacts with receptors on nearby cells called a paracrine action, or it binds to receptors on or in the same cell that released it called an autocrine action. Once bound to the receptor, the receptor changes its shape, allowing it to activate multiple of these signaling proteins that I discussed earlier. In doing so, these signaling proteins continue a cascade of activation until eventually causing reduced activation of pro-inflammatory molecules like NF-kappa B pathway, as well as changing the concentration of proteins responsible for cell death called the BCL family proteins. They're a deadly family, at least some of them. Okay, there are several more mechanisms afoot, but we need to get into the clinical human data. So these mechanisms are really nifty, but does supplementation with omega-3s actually yield better cognitive performance? For that, we can look at an analysis of 17 studies. And in this analysis, the researchers separated out multiple measurements of cognition from memory, executive function, global cognition, and so on. If we take a peek at the data here, we're looking at executive function, which is similar to critical thinking ability. The individual studies are on the left side. The Z value and P value are statistical measurements. And what I'd like to turn your attention toward is the visual representation on the right. There's a middle line above the 0.00, and that line indicates there is no effect of omega-3 supplementation. Anything to the right indicates a likely effect of supplementation, and anything to the left indicates worsening results of supplementation. 
the squares and lines are the individual study results. And the black diamond at the bottom is the averaged effect, the overall effect when combining all the studies together. If you know anything about statistics, you'll see that many of the individual studies do not reach statistical cutoff to indicate there is an effect. It's usually set to 0.05. So any number under 0.05 would indicate a likely effect. Interestingly, only two or three studies show an effect. And yet the overall analysis with all the data pooled together indicates there's a likely benefit of omega-3 supplementation. The researchers have used a standardized system for quantifying the degree or amount of the effect. This is called a Hedges G. If you know anything about Hedges G, which you should if you've taken my course on how to read studies and apply them to your life, then I'll mention the effect was 0.22 after excluding three studies due to a poor methodological quality. For you normal people that don't speak stats, <laughs> that means the effect is very small. But interestingly, the effect was greater in one other area and worse in others. And there are some differences between men and women. Before I get to that, I also quantified the ideal amount to use, the upper threshold, and the type of omega-3 most thought to cause these benefits. I covered that in the extended version of this video, which is included in the Physiotic Insiders. If you're interested in joining, the link is in the description. Now, back to the results. It turns out that omega-3 supplementation does help with memory. However, we can see the effect seems to be a bit greater too, which it is, with an effect of 0.34, indicating still a small effect, but still greater than before. Now, there's something interesting here because one study did separate men and women when looking at memory, and they found some intriguing differences. There are different sub-genres of memory, in this case, episodic and working memory. Episodic is the ability to remember memories of experiences, and working memory is the ability to recall information for critical thinking, executive function, basically maintain a train of thought. This study showed that women experience improvements in episodic memory from omega-3 supplementation, but that effect was not seen in men. However, men experienced improvements in certain measures of working memory, which women did not experience. Now, don't think that these are life-changing effects. They're very small, but they offer a possible distinction on the omega-3 effect, which I find really fascinating, so, so I thought I'd share. You know what's interesting, though? Omega-3 supplementation did not show improvements in language and global cognition, both metrics of mental performance. That said, there were less than half the number of studies included in those analyses, so if more studies had been included, it might have shown a benefit. But look, here's the bottom line. Omega-3 supplementation has good evidence behind it, improving a few metrics of cognitive function, but don't expect any miracles. These are small effects. Additionally, most of these studies were in older, over 60 years old participants. So I would guess that the effect might be even smaller in younger individuals, but that doesn't mean that it can't be a great preventative to all with special emphasis on those over the age of 60 and those with mild cognitive impairment. Also, I cover more on the topic here if you are so inclined. Thanks for watching.